today's tale, we're going to be talking about a few tips and tricks that I have picked up from the few hours that I've played of this game. Uh, so the first one is how to do crop management, right? So here we're going to plant our cabinet. And the reason I plant this one is it's pretty cheap, 5,000. The other one is about 10,000. And right at the start of the game, I don't really think you have the resources for it. Uh, so I always plant the cheap one. And it gives you enough resources that if the first year is not good, at least you can kind of make it through the next few years. Because more often than not, I've started a few of these games and it's been terrible. So what I do for the first few months is I try to maintain light foliage. The reason I maintain light foliage is a cloudy day will put your ripeness up by nothing. A sunny day will put it up by one. And anything else, a rainy day just kind of grows it a bit. You do have to be careful because I find during spring you get the most rainy days. And with that, you can get a bit of rot. It's it's a bit of RNG, right? Because you're looking for you're looking to go into summer kind of around the three if you can. If not, you tend to get a bit of rot. You don't want to go into summer with uh, less foliage because what you find in summer is you get a lot of uh, clear days. And the clear days will push you right up into being overexposed. And towards the end of summer, you can cut down your foliage if you think you're not going to make it to the desired amount. So the desired amount you want here is around four, five, six, right, to get a decent crop. And here you can see we're already into July, we're up to three, and that's just off the back of light foliage. You could maybe risk optimal foliage, but you're more likely to find that you get rot, and rot really cuts into your total yield down here. So we're into July, we're already up to four, that's a little scary, I would like some rain. Uh, cloud's not so bad, at least we're not going up. So I'm going to talk about a few things here, so I'm going to pause it for a second. When you get to this point of the game, I would have preferred to have uh, optimal foliage. The reason for this is because during August, August is going to be when you can, when you get the option to harvest. But you don't actually want to harvest in August. Because if you can, you can go later into the seasons and you'll get more yield. So it offers you the option to harvest. And you can harvest at that point if you think that your crop's not going to be good. So if you are suddenly at a six and you have no foliage on your crop, I would harvest then because I would suspect in the later seasons that I'm going to basically shoot off the chart, which is really bad. So I don't want to get up here because I'll be overexposed. Uh, other times I might try for an early crop as... Yeah, basically if I think it's gonna, anything is gonna adversely affect it, which is generally if I have little to no foliage on here. So we're into August, we're clear. We're up to five, so now this is where you start to risk it, right? Now, the reason it's a risk is I could harvest now, and I'll probably get an optimal crop out of this, right? Which will be great for me. But, if I go to November, no later than November, because as soon as you hit December, your entire crop dies, because it's winter. But if you go into November, you can get a fairly substantial gain on your crop here. Uh, so I'm going to risk it, just to show you guys. Normally, I would probably consider harvesting now, just because uh, I'm at a fairly good number here. Five would give me a really good crop. Uh, so I'm probably risking it a little bit here. So we're going to go into October. So now I would definitely harvest, right? The reason I would definitely harvest now is because I'm into six and anything higher than this is going to give me a fairly bad crop. Uh, if I had optimal coverage on here, if I had a little bit more foliage on here, I would definitely go later. But you can see we're already up to 1.6, which is way better than, say, the one that you would probably get, the 1.2 that you would most likely get at uh, August. Whereas if you go into October, you're getting a lot more. Which means if you're getting a really good crop uh, with, at 1.6, you're going to get the amounts you need, right? 
And even at six, I still managed to pull in a, uh, a decent crop, right? I mean, the thing about this game is you're going to get years where it's going to rain all year, you're going to grow rotten crop, it's not going to do anything, or it's going to uh, it's going to be sunny, you're going to get no rain, and things are going to go really horrible for you. But those are the risks you take as a winemaker, really. So obviously, it's the first year, right? So all we get is piggage. Now the thing with piggage is it adds to your tannins, and we're going to add a little bit of tannins, which from what I gather is not good <laughs> for your wine, but it also adds to your body, right? The thing that I try to aim for with my wines, especially for my, uh, my early wines, is I try to get my sweetness down to about four, uh, and that should get us in a good position there to get a decent wine. So we're looking for a four or a five in our first year. Uh, just out of this crop. If I'd had a bad year, I might consider binning the crop uh, just because it's not going to sell. And I'll explain a little bit about how the selling process works as well. Uh, the thing is, is if you have a bad crop and a bad bottle, it's really hard to shift the merchandise. So the thing here is I've got five acidity, right? I actually want to push that up because I'm going to store these in barrels. And the barrels, as they age, they're going to drag down both the tannins and the acidity. Also, by crushing this by a fair bit, you get a lot of body as well. So I'm going to full crush it, which should give us a lot of body and a lot of acidity to work with. So we're going to begin our crushing here. And I will show you. So now we have 9 body, 10 acidity. We've got a fair few tannins. But in our oak barrel here, we should get a decrease of 1 acidity per two tannins and from what I've noticed it only goes down to as low as four tannins uh, which is generally where I tend to do it so we're at seven now so we're gonna speed up a little we want to go a few months into the future to get our wine going and we should get a pretty good wine out of this one I feel so you got to keep an eye on it because you do not want it getting uh, you do not want your acidity to go down too low so I think we'll go one more. And also you can see that your body also goes down as soon as you start doing this. So one more month should get us into the right spot. All right, we're still in February. Come on, February. You can do it. You can do it. So the thing you also have to manage is obviously your crops are growing at the same time as your barrels here. So we can see we're down to four. This is as low as I've seen it go. Uh, we've got eight acidity and we've got five bodies. So we're definitely going to bottle this. Uh, we're going to just chuck it in a normal bottle to start with. You can go for the cork if you like, but the price that it adds, considering our renown, is pretty low at the moment. It's, it's not really worth. Um, so we do have the ex excellent weather management here. And this is kind of what I aim for normally. Maybe around 7. Maybe, maybe 7 would have been a bit better actually, but normally I add, aim for around this level. We're going to invite to the tasting here. And you get five stars, right? So straight off the bat, this is what you're kind of looking for. Sometimes I get seven, but I try for the low sweetness, the, the low tannins, the body. It's kind of hard to deal with the body because you don't have any way to directly influence it. Sweetness, you can at least lock in when you're fermenting. If you go too sweet, I find you get a bad rating. Uh, if you leave the tannins up high, I found that you get a bad rating. Acidity low tends to give you a bad rating. Uh, this is just what I found for the first few hours. Uh, so now I'm going to show you how to sell this stuff to get maximum profit, right? So you come here and you go, sweet, I could sell this across everyone, right? That is a dead set mistake. Right here, you have distributor, uh, distributor relation price per bottle, right? And you see you've got a bunch of zeros here. So if I were to sell this all across the board, I'd probably only get a little bit in each, right? Whereas if I go like this, and I only sell 200, it should go up by a bit, right? So we're up to two. And what this does is I'll show you. So now I've got a relationship of two with old Manhattan here, right? I go done, and I go back to sell, right? I am now selling at 28 per bottle instead of 20. 
If I sold across all of these guys, it would be 20 across them all, right? And I would have shoved away 600 bottles, right? Instead, what you do is you wait for this guy to sell you 200 bottles, you sell him another 200, this will go up again. And then you sell him another 200, it goes up to a maximum of 5, right? Which is how you push up your pricing on your bottles. What I try to do is if I get a bad year, I will maybe concentrate on one seller for good wine and one for bad wine. With bad wine, it takes forever to sell it. If you have a no star wine, you're probably looking at a very long time to sell it, or later on in the game, I just actually start discarding it. The reason I discard it is because if you have a bunch of fives that you want to sell, and you can't sell it, you're kind of stuck, right? You're fairly much wedged in to what you've got. So, there's a couple of tips. Basically, crop management, try to keep between 4, 5, and 6. I start out the year uh, trying with uh, light coverage on my foliage so that I don't push too high. If I think I'm not going to make it, then I can cut off. It's always easier to go up on the scale than it is to go down. To go down, you really need a lot of rain at the later stages, and that's really hard. Uh, once I've got my bottles, uh, if you're lucky, you'll get a decent uh, decent grouping here. This is kind of what I aim for with the acidity, the sweetness, the tannins, and the body. Lastly, when you're selling, always sell to the one distributor. Push up your prices on the one distributor. Do not sell across multiples. Thanks for watching. And also, sorry, I forgot to add, do not harvest in August if you do not have to. Always push it later if you can. If you can't, harvest in August. And what I mean by that is, if you think you're going to go above the sweet region, harvest. If you're in the sweet region and you think you're going to stay there, wait it out till November. Thank you for watching. Those are my tips and tricks for making great wine. Tune in for more tales. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. If you like what you've seen, hit that subscribe button or leave me a comment on anything you want to see in the future.